Hey guys, it's Laptop Laura, and this is Copy That Pops. Writing tips and psychology hacks applied to online biz success. Whoa, oh, 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 here we go. Hello, my copy poppers. Welcome to the show. So I have a confession to make. Even though I love listening to podcasts and audiobooks, and I've been in the podcasting world since 2015, I've actually never created an audiobook for myself or for a client. And did you know that in 2020, according to Statista, audiobook sales revenue in the United States reached about $1.3 billion, continuing the upward trend that had started in 2018. So I'm sure it's even crazy higher as of 2022 when I record this. So in today's episode, I thought it would be fun to take you along for a new journey into the world of audiobook creation. I have a client who has a series of five books for kids ages about eight to 12, and she just published them on Amazon as a Kindle box set, but wants to do the audiobook version as well. I volunteered to jump in and help since I need to know how to do the whole process myself. So here's what we've done so far in the audiobook making process. Step one, we set up a free account at acx.com. The ACX stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange. Step two, on August 16th, 2022, we uploaded a sample of the book and opened it up for voice actor auditions. Step three, as I prepped for this podcast on September 1st, we had received a whopping 33 auditions. Some are really, really great. Others need to improve the sound quality around the setup that they have. So totally for free, we've received a range of what sounds like beginner voice actors really trying to get started all the way up to super professional. And as a side note, you might be wondering how the voice actors get paid. Well, you have two options through ACX. You can pay up front at a fixed price per finished audio hour with no royalty sharing, and you can decide on that fixed rate. Or number two, you can pay with a 50-50 royalty split for any future sales with no upfront costs to you for the work done. Step four is where we are now, reviewing the auditions and picking someone or maybe a couple to make an offer to and see if they come back and negotiate and kind of you know figure out a deal. And at this stage, we need help choosing. We narrowed it down to 10 of our favorites, but that's still too many to put forth when asking for feedback, I think. So then we narrowed it down again to our top six. And in just a moment, I will play a short sample of each of our top six. And I would so appreciate your feedback and sharing which one is your favorite. In a sense, be a voice casting director with us. And you can send your votes or feedback by shooting me an email to laura at copythatpops.com. Or you can ping me on social media. I'm at Laptop Laura all over the place. Two other URLs to mention. If you want to grab a copy of the full five book box set of the Kid Star Squad, if you find it to be a really sweet story, then you can check it out if you go to copythatpops.com forward slash Kid Star Squad. And that URL will redirect you over to Amazon, where it's also completely free with Kindle Unlimited. And then if you want to be able to read along with the auditions that you're hearing, you can head back to the show notes for this episode. Or you can type in copythatpops.com forward slash auditions, and that will redirect you to a page where I uploaded just the audio for the six auditions and the chapter samples where you could look at the words and kind of read along if that's helpful for you. Okay, but for this episode, if you're not going anywhere else, let's jump into our top six picks. And then following that, I'll tell you what's next on our list of to do's for audiobook creation. So what you're about to hear is auditioner number one and two are reading chapter one in the first book of the series. Auditioner three and four will be reading chapter two and auditioner five and six will be reading chapter three. Okay, put on your casting director hats and let's have a listen. Audition one, reading chapter one. Chapter one, best day ever? Five minutes to go. Cleo was one excited cat. She sat up straight and eyed the clock above Mr. Vogel's head. Her ears stood straight up and her whiskers pointed forward. She had to be alert. She had to be the first one out of the room when the bell rings. Today is the day my life changes forever, she thought. Four minutes. And now, your assignment for next week, blah, blah, blah. 
Mr. Vogel droned on. Cleo paid no attention. She was too excited. Her mind raced a million thoughts a minute. She quickly put away the items on her desk and repeated her daily mantra in her head. I am strong. I am important. I have great friends. I am kind, intelligent, and worthy. I am enough. The blood of Egyptian kings and queens runs through me. I am Cleopatra. Cleo loved repeating her magic words. They calmed her down, filled her with positivity, and gave her the strength to put her best foot forward every day. Two minutes. Almost there. Her tail quivered with excitement. Yes, she almost hissed aloud. Today will change everything. Bring, bring. Finally. Cleo jumped out of her seat and was the first out the door. She bolted toward the school theater. Today is the day that will change my life forever. Correction, she thought. Today will change our lives forever. Audition 2, reading chapter 1. Chapter 1, the best day ever? Five minutes to go. Cleo was one excited cat. She sat up straight and eyed the clock above Mr. Vogel's head. Her ears stood straight up and her whiskers pointed forward. She had to be alert. She had to be the first one out of the room when the bell rings. Today is the day my life changes forever, she thought. Four minutes. Oh, no, your assignment for next week, blah, 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 Mr. Vogel droned on. Cleo paid no attention. She was too excited. Her mind raced a million thoughts a minute. She quickly put away the items on her desk and repeated her daily mantra in her head. I am strong. I am important. I have great friends. I am kind, intelligent, and worthy. I am enough. The blood of Egyptian kings and queens runs through me. I am Cleopatra. Cleo loved repeating her magic words. They calmed her down, filled her with positivity, and gave her the strength to put her best foot forward every day. Two minutes. Almost there. Her tail quivered with excitement. Yes! She almost hissed aloud. Today we'll change everything. Ring, ring! Finally! Cleo jumped out of her seat and was the first one out the door. She bolted towards the school theater. Today is the day that my life will change forever. Correction, she thought. Today will change our lives forever. Audition 3, reading Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Super Secret Meeting Today is day one of the rest of our lives, announced Cleo to her group of friends. Today we are going to start working on our new YouTube channel. It will make us all rich and famous. Atosha, the lovable elephant, let out a loud trumpet. Montego, the disciplined monkey, jumped on his seat as he howled. Riley, the adventurous rabbit, thumped his feet in a remarkable dance, and Fuji, the smart fox, wagged her tail and barked in excitement. Cleo reached inside her bag and took out a silver notebook with a mandela etched toward the bottom of the cover. She had written Kid Star Squad in gold. Now what are your best ideas for our new channel? asked Cleo excitedly. How about the adventures of martial arts master Montego, Montego suggested, as he performed a backflip followed by a half turn and a sidekick. I suggest we do something earth friendly, added Atosha. How about each week we feature a different way of helping Mother Earth, like recycling, cleaning up trash and so on. Very good ideas, keep them coming, said Cleo, as she furiously scribbled in the notebook. I think we should rock it as gamers, live stream our video games and get famous, added Fuji, the computer whiz. Pranks! You can never go wrong with pranks and YouTube challenges. That's what we should do, advised Riley. And my idea, added Cleo, is to do product reviews. We can unbox and give our opinions about toys, books, gadgets and anything else that we use for entertainment. The group was more excited than ever before. They had each tried to do YouTube on their own without much success, but this time would be different. After all, five heads are better than one. Audition 4, Reading Chapter 2 
Chapter 2, Super Secret Meeting Today is day one of the rest of our lives, announced Cleo to her group of friends. Today, we are going to start working on our new YouTube channel. It will make us all rich and famous. Atosha, the lovable elephant, let out a loud trumpet. Montango, the disciplined monkey, jumped in his seat as he howled. Riley, the adventurous rabbit, thumped his feet in a remarkable dance. And Fuji, the smart fox, wagged her tail and barked in excitement. Cleo reached inside her bag and took out a silver notebook with a mandala etched towards the bottom of the cover. She had written, Kids Star Squad in Gold. Now, what are your best ideas for our new channel? asked Cleo excitedly. How about the adventures of martial arts master Montego? Montego suggested as he performed a backflip followed by a half turn and a sidekick. I suggest we do something earth-friendly, added Itosha. How about each week we feature a different way of helping Mother Earth, like recycling, cleaning up trash, and so on. Very good ideas. Keep them coming, said Cleo as she furiously scribbled in the notebook. I think we should rock it as gamers, live stream our video games, and get famous, added Fuji the computer wits. Pranks! You can never go wrong with pranks and YouTube challenges. That's what we should do, advised Riley. And my idea, added Cleo, is to do product reviews. We can unbox and give our opinions about toys, books, gadgets, and anything else that we use for entertainment. The group was more excited than ever before. They had each tried to do YouTube on their own without much success. But this time would be different. After all, five heads are better than one. Audition 5, Reading Chapter 3 Chapter 3, Disappearing Notebook and now, please stand up and raise your right paw, hand, or foot, Cleo said as she winked at Atosha, and repeat after me. Her friends rose quickly for the swear of allegiance. I swear allegiance to the Kid Star Squad. I will work hard for the group's success. I will fiercely protect our secrets. We will do good with our fame and fortune. Five heads are better than one. The five friends were just finished declaring their allegiance in unison when crash! Everyone jumped at the loud noise from behind the curtain. What was that? asked Montego as the group rushed to the front of the stage. They saw a few overturned chairs in the front row. Montego and Riley jumped off stage to investigate further. Atosha raised her big ears to listen attentively as she called out, Hello? Is anybody there? Someone threw this ball! said Riley as he scooped up a basketball from under the chairs. Montego studied the mess of chairs and turned in the direction it came from. The girls didn't miss a beat. They ran to the side of the stage and looked behind the curtains. Hello? Who's there? Show yourself. Montego jumped onto the stage and searched all over the set, even inside boxes of props. Then, with his tree-climbing skills, he scaled the long curtains to see if anyone was hiding above the set. Nothing. As a team, the five friends searched high and low. They searched in every row and under every seat. Empty. That was weird, noted Fuji as the group came back together. Riley tossed the ball from one rabbit paw to the other, trying to make sense of the situation, when Cleo yelled out, Wait! Our secrets! She ran backstage and stopped in shock and horror. The others were quick on her tail. But it was too late. The notebook was gone. The Kid Star Squad's secrets were stolen. Audition 6, reading Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Disappearing Notebook. And now please stand up and raise your right paw, hand, or front foot, Cleo said as she winked at Atosha. And repeat after me. Her friends rose quickly for the swear of allegiance. I swear allegiance to the Kid Star Squad. I will work hard for the group's success. I will fiercely protect our secrets. We will do good with our fame and fortune. Five heads are better than one. The five friends were just finished declaring their allegiance in unison when... Crash! Everyone jumped at the loud noise from behind the curtain. What was that? asked Montego as the group rushed to the front of the stage. They saw a few overturned chairs in the front row. Montego and Riley jumped off stage to investigate further. Atosha raised her big ears to listen attentively as she called out, Hello? 
Is anybody there? Someone threw this ball, said Riley as he scooped up a basketball from under the chairs. Montego studied the mess of chairs and turned in the direction it came from. The girls didn't miss a beat. They ran to the side of the stage and looked behind the curtains. Hello? Who's there? Show yourself. Montego jumped onto the stage and searched all over the set, even inside boxes of props. Then, with his tree-climbing skills, he scaled the long curtains to see if anyone was hiding above the set. Nothing. As a team, the five friends searched high and low. They searched in every row and under every seat. Empty. That was weird, noted Fuji as the group came back together. Riley tossed the ball from one rabbit paw to the other, trying to make sense of the situation. When Cleo yelled out, Wait, our secrets! She ran backstage and stopped in shock and horror. The others were quick on her tail. But it was too late. The notebook was gone. The Kid Star Squad secrets were stolen. Great voice actors, right? It's so hard to pick. Part of me wants Emma to pick a female voice, but then some of those male voiceover artists were really terrific too. What should we do? Help. We don't know what to pick. So remember, share your favorite or any feedback by emailing me, laura at copythatpops.com, or you can ping me on social media at Laptop Laura. And I'll collect and tabulate all the feedback to help advise Emma on the final choice. Okay, so what's up next in the audiobook process? After we pick our favorite voice actor, we'll make an offer for the payment arrangement, and we're thinking about doing the payment upfront way. If he or she accepts, then we'll have a deal and a legally binding contract. Then the voice actor or producer, as they're called in ACX, will record and upload a 15-minute checkpoint of the audiobook for us to listen to, give feedback, and approve and say, keep on going. So once that's done, the producer will then keep going and record the full project with our feedback in mind. We can ask for up to two rounds of corrections to the finished audiobook. And then once we're happy, we'll approve it and pay the producer. From there, it's time to make the book live to the world. And ACX distributes it through Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. So more on these next steps in a future podcast episode. For now, we have to settle on the producer. And no matter who we choose or if you want to share your vote or not, I hope this episode was helpful in inspiring and motivating you to take action by bringing your books to life in audiobook form. Well, until next time, keep on finding ways to write copy that pops. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. You can find more at copythatpops.com and I'm at Laptop Laura on all the socials. Sometimes we fall.